like their brothers and sisters in the Lord and Yeshua. Um, you know, the Bible does certainly teach that the higher condemnation um, comes from the false teaching. Yes, there's a lot of, uh, what would you say, false prophets that have come in the last days predicting the Lord's coming. And, uh, you know, it hasn't happened, which makes them a false prophet. You know, once you give a date or once you say a specific thing about an event and it doesn't happen, then um, unless you can prove something has happened, unless there's proof of it. Like, for example, I heard someone... Um, predict a certain event that uh, you know the last seven years would start I believe last year and I, I think it's possible you know uh, because the Mandela effect also started last year for, for most of us um, were really shown and thousands of, of, of Christians worldwide were, were, were given revelation about this and of course, uh, you know, Christian churches aren't talking about it because they are not walking with Christ. Um, you know, the Bible does testify that a congregation should be based on apostles and prophets. And, uh, you know, I do believe that um, my organization, um, this foundation, I believe, was, was started in the United States. You know, I believe that the man that I met there, whose uh, name is... Uh, James, but known as Isaiah, the ex-Amish man. Well, I pray he's still get, you know, getting on with the Lord. Um, you know that uh, we are all sinners, fallen short of the glory of God, and as long as he remembers, we all remember to go and um, repent of our sin and get right with him. Uh, yet, many of us have had true teachings revealed to us, uh, and I think recently one of the street evangelists that I watch um, that, that, that do healings, you know, he was just saying that the gifts of God are without repentance. So there's people who have spiritual gifts, um, who can do healings, um, different things. There's prophecy, there's teaching. Um, Obviously the ones who are teaching are expected to live in a higher standard, a better example for perhaps the, the rest of the body of Christ. Um, sometimes the pastor is, is obviously given that role of, uh, um, you know, being the example among the flock and uh, basically uh, rightly directing, rightly dividing the word and directing the flock according to the, uh, the teaching is revealed to them through the Word of God. Which brings me to uh, obviously Flyer 23. I've made a video about it before, which which I did that flyer I think a year or two ago now. And uh, been giving them out a lot. And uh, the people, there's one or two people on Facebook that, that are getting strong revelations about it. And the people that I'm walking with and um, doing ministry with are also getting strong revelations about it. And uh, you know, so spent uh, some time there with uh, these East Coasters, with, with, with uh, very interesting people. And uh, maybe we'll get round to uh, catching up with them again sometime. They have very interesting testimonies. But um, you know, uh, Charles Spurgeon said that Christmas and Easter are Romanish festivals, which is within that flyer. And uh, even the Christian church, as little as 50 to 100 years ago, um, banned these festivals. Like from the British Reformation, the British Reformation, these festivals were actually banned. Catholicism was banned and therefore these festivals were banned because they're pagan. Pagan revelry happens. Um, there's no such thing as the 12 days of Christmas and all that stuff. And why does it start like about a month and a half early nowadays? You know, when the lights in, in, in Glasgow City were actually switched on at the weekend, just about three days ago. You know, that's the lights for... for I mean, they're getting earlier and earlier every single year. And, uh, you know, what's thanking Santa, which is an anagram for Satan, for a present, when, when the name of Jesus is, is not, never mentioned? Um, 
children, parents alike, never thank Jesus Christ for them being able to buy uh, presents, for being able to, uh, um, I guess, provide for their children, which they say is loosely based on the wise men giving Christ uh, gold, frankincense and more, which is like, you know, a PlayStation is a bit of a step away, I think, from that, you know, and uh, chocolate chocolate Easter eggs when, when Christ got resurrected from the dead and you paint Easter eggs red, what's the connection? Very few Christians question these things. Jesus Christ himself says many are called and so out of the called who call themselves Christian we must make sure we're like the Bereans who study the scriptures every day so that we become chosen, chosen vessels for the Lord to carry um, the word of God, the teachings of God um, the, even the glory of God, the revelations of God, in order that um, Jesus Christ gets glorified. He's not going to get glorified in pagan festivals. The Bible is very, very clear about that. It doesn't matter if you're, oh, I intend to worship Jesus on these festivals. These festivals are not biblical. Jesus was not born on December the 23rd, 24th, 25th, none of these times. In fact, this calendar never even existed during Christ's day. This was brought in by Constantine and reformed many, many different times. I think Pope Gregory was one of the last ones to, to reform this calendar. That's why it's called the Gregorian calendar. And so if you say you're a Protestant, why are you following papish, Romanish teachings? And the other thing I've been noticing, uh, we, we all know that the Romans came and uh, they, they pretty much conquered Wales and England. And when they got to Scotland, they built what was called Hadrian's Wall because, you know, the, the, the Scots at that time, who, who were called the Caledonians, they weren't even called Scots at that time, um, used ambush tactics, guerrilla warfare tactics. Uh, they wouldn't face the Romans in the battlefield, but they simply ambushed um, legions of Roman um, soldiers. And the Romans just get tired of it and just built a wall and says, look, these people are just, we, we just uh, can't get our head around how to how to conquer um, um, Caledonia, which is the, the northern part of Britain at the time before it became Scotland uh, later on. And um, because that's when the, the Christian Scots came over from Ireland, the Scots were a Christian, a Christian tribe from Ireland, and uh, through St. Columba they were able to... Uh, Unite Scotland under Christianity, under St. Columba. So, um, so that's the sort of general history of, 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 of Scotland and the area that I'm from. And uh, these Scots never did the Romanish festivals. Now, there were other Protestant tribes in Europe, such as the Flemish, um, who were wiped out by the Romans. Um, some Celtic tribes were um, wiped out, as I've said before. Uh, most of them were Nephilim in their um, character, in their nature. In, in other words, they were giants. And what the Romans normally did was that they captured the champion of these tribes. And a lot of them, like Maximilian, uh, who became, I believe he became the, the French king at one time. Or, or was it the... Uh, the Roman leader, I think he may have became a Roman leader, Maximilian, and then there was a, is it, was it a, Sh Sh Charmelian, I think it was, Charmelian, um, became the French king, who, who was over eight feet tall. <clears throat> so, you know, th there's still remnants of, 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 of the giants uh, within Europe, and within Africa, and within probably the Red Indians as well. You know, they, they had a similar history different tribes of Red Indians um, who came mostly from Asia it seems and uh, you know they, they had sort of a giant tribes as well you know if you look at the, the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest you know Jack Nicholson the actor in that film is a Red Indian who's about over seven feet tall not I don't think he was in that film I'm not sure if he was but you know uh, they had a lot of giant traits going on as well but, um, so yeah, anyway, uh, these festivals are pagan. Ishtar um, is, is a pagan goddess referred to. If you read Jeremiah 10, it talks about this. Um, 
when even the Israelites made Ishtar cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And that's what it's all about, it's Queen of Heaven worship, which which if you look at the uh, mother and child, it's, uh, it's Venus or Ishtar. It's just the same goddess that, that they're worshipping. And then Christ Mass, um, as Charles Spurgeon said, Christ was never in the Mass. We reject the Mass as Protestants. Um, the, the monstrous does not represent the body of Christ. It represents uh, the Antichrist, the son of Lucifer, as they, as they actually speak in Latin. They say that in Latin. And if they're honest, they will admit that. But they're not honest. There's <laughs> very few Catholic priests who are honest, and the ones that are will be thrown out from the Catholic Church and banned from the Catholic Church. There is some Catholic priests who, who come into this information, like uh, Luther and you know um, Wesley and so on, different reformists um, through the years have came into this information and received it, and this is what we call the Protestant Reformation, which uh, is sort of dying out. I think it's the four, is it 400 years this year since the Protestant Reformation? I think it was something like that. Something like that. Which uh, I know I've been watching, um, I've been watching Angela Cummings videos and uh, you know she's getting into the parts of Europe now where there's large groups of Muslims and I think she got she didn't thankfully get physically attacked, but I think her camera got knocked the other day, so you know, I got a camera there that I could give her, but my, my concern is that uh, she still does the, the Roman festivals and you know, I'd, I'd love to help her out and I, and I have in the past, I've helped many, many evangelists and people out in the past uh, in many different ways, but as, as, a, as, as a minister myself, as a pastor myself, I got to make sure that uh, People are understanding and teaching the correct uh, teachings from the Word of God, and if, you know, if they're doing something else, then I have to say, well, repent. You, you have to repent and uh, turn, turn to the Lord and ask Him about was He really born at Christmas? Ask Him about is Christmas really pleasing to Him? Ask Him about uh, was was Easter or Easter time the time that Jesus rose from the dead, or was it truly? Was it truly first fruits of Passover, as the Bible says, as the Bible teaches? You know, and and if you can't come up with scriptures, if you if you insist that you're Bible based and you can't come up with any scriptures, then I got to say, well, no, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm I'm not going to put my hand in my pocket for you anymore. Um, very very few people support my ministry, and so you know, if if I had an abundance, I could obviously just uh, ha do handouts for people, but. You know, uh, you know the apostles when they when they started the church, they, they got the congregation small as it was to donate everything they could. Some of them donated everything. You know, uh, some of them like uh, in the Book of Acts, uh, there's a couple who said they would donate everything, but they kept money back from from God. You know, and so uh, what what does that mean? It means that you know if if you make a promise to the Lord. You should keep it, especially in, in in the presence of his saints, especially in the presence of his church. If 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 you made an open declaration what you're going to do, then then you must honour that um, for for the glory of God and for the betterment of um, his people, the church who are carrying the true teachings of God and who are going through real persecution for what they believe from Jews, and and, and a lot of people think well. Where does the main persecution come from? If you start keeping the biblical feasts instead of the, the Roman feasts, where do you think the, the main persecution comes from? The Catholic Church? You may get a bit from there. Where does it come from? Protestantism? You've got a lot of ignorant people within Protestantism that are not Protestants. They're not protesting as Martin Luther did or as any of the, the other reformists did. Um, no, well, the main persecution comes from the Jewish people because the Jewish people think that the, the Jewish festivals are exclusively for them. Exclusively for them. And, and if you say that, you know, if you dare say, oh, I'm observing Passover or I'm, um, I want to observe the Feast of, of Tabernacles, you know, well, they, they get their nose in there and they'll say, well, this is ours. And uh, they, they, they almost feel a right to to take things, they almost feel a right to persecute you, they almost feel a right to say look this is this is our um, religion or this is our 
um, territory, so, you know, uh, they're going to get persecution. Even though I went to, to Israel um, last year, of course, to, to observe the Feast of Tabernacles, which I hugely enjoyed, I really did. And I think it's probably better going to Israel to do that because, um, you know, it's, it's just the... It's just the way there. It's just it's just what they do there. So I think maybe you'll be a little bit more appreciated um, there until you speak the name Yeshua, of course. But anyway, so so yes, my friends. Um, thank you for continuing to watch the videos. Uh, I just wanted to share with you some dreams and visions, which I think I'll do on the next video because I think this video is packed enough. Full of full of information about the the false festivals and about about the true biblical festivals. So I'm going to leave this video here and we'll start another video and talk about some dreams uh, that me and a friend had the other day. God bless you.